The following is a sermon delivered by Carla Satinsky at Temple Israel on March 30th, 1985. I must thank you for inviting me this evening to participate in the Sisterhood Sabbath. I feel highly honored for myself and the organization that I represent. The League of Women Voters has been around for 65 years, since 1920, when women got the right to vote. In the United States, I think that many years qualifies the League as a somewhat venerable organization. Our reputation for nonpartisanship, voter education, and action on political issues is well known throughout the country. Perhaps the role of the League will be clearer to you if I begin my remarks with part of a speech given by Carrie Chapman Catt a leader of the women's suffrage movement on February 14, 1920 to a group of women who had joined forces to get women the right to vote. She proposed to this convention in Chicago the creation of a new organization, a League of Women Voters, which would finish the fight for the reconstruction of the country. I quote, The League of Women Voters is not to dissolve any present organization, but to unite all existing organizations of women who believe in its principles. It is not to create sex antagonism, but to develop cooperation between men and women. It is not to lure women from partisanship, but to combine them in an effort for legislation which will protect coming movements, which we cannot even foretell, from suffering the untoward conditions which have hindered for so long the coming of equal suffrage. Are the women of the United States big enough to see their opportunity? That's the end of the quote. The women at that convention were strong-minded ladies who had not been afraid to become involved. They had learned in self-defense the intricacies of the legislative system. They had learned patience and fortitude and they had tasted success when the amendment was ratified. These women were part of a movement that had worked 72 years to achieve its goal, a formidable group. From the very beginning, the new organization demonstrated that it was not timid. The early agenda included 69 separate items as statements of principle and recommendations for legislation. Even at that time, 1920, the League felt that it should not concentrate its efforts exclusively on women's issues. Among the goals of this fledgling group were support for collective bargaining, child labor laws, a minimum wage, a joint federal-state employment service, compulsory education, and equal opportunity for women in government and industry. These women fought for and won passage of a bill that provided federal aid for maternal and child care programs, a forerunner of other legislation to appropriate federal funds for social welfare programs. I think it is important to consider the way the League operated. It stayed within the system, seeking to educate, to lobby legislators, and to provide firm support for its positions. The League was patient and consistent and did see results. In 1934, when federal and state government agencies were hiring thousands of employees to administer the new social and economic laws, the League launched a nationwide campaign in support of the merit system for selecting government personnel. The League was the only national organization acting for the merit system in those years. And due at least in part to our efforts, legislation was passed in 38 and 40, which removed hundreds of federal jobs from the patronage system and placed them under civil service. I must admit that I purposely started with a discussion of the League of Women Voters as a group concerned with action on legislation, because I suspect that those of you who are not very familiar with the League are aware of our efforts in the field of voter education including the Voter's Guide and local as well as national debates. We really do believe that the educated, informed voter is our country's most important asset. We go out to register the new voter and then try as much as possible to offer the best and most complete nonpartisan information available. You may rely on the League never to support or oppose any candidate, but the issues of the campaign are essential, and we do everything we can think of to bring them to the attention of the voters, so that when you go to the polls, you will feel confident about your choices. My first League meeting was fairly typical, I suspect. 
In 1971, I was a newcomer to Maryland, having been born and raised in Philadelphia. And I must admit, the political system here was different from the one I knew. My oldest child was in third grade, and the subject of this meeting was the Montgomery County Public School System. You may imagine that I felt a strong personal interest in the information to be presented that evening. The rules of our organization state that guests are always welcome, but if you want to participate in our consensus procedure, you have to join. I gave them my check that very evening so I could be counted. I found the group of women very attractive. There were people like me who had young children at home. There were women who were working and came in the evening because they were not available during the day. And there were older women who came to this meeting because it was geographically convenient and had always been their unit. Unlike my usual experiences with other groups, no one asked me how my child was doing with his teacher. No one wanted to know my husband's profession, and no one was interested in how I furnished my home. I was certainly challenged on statements about the subject at the meeting, but this was done in the spirit of lively debate and only added to the interest of the evening. These women not only gave their opinions, they listened, and when others offered a different point of view, <laughs> they listened when others offered a different point of view. Slight mistake. And because of the differing backgrounds of the people present that evening, there were certainly lots of conflicting views. It was a little amazing to me that the group did reach consensus out of all this discussion, and very exhilarating. I think the League of Women Voters is more than anything else for its members a learning experience. Each month we have a meeting on a particular subject. As long as you are interested in the political system and willing to expand your horizons to include subjects as diverse as clean water in the Potomac, the disposal of hazardous waste in Maryland, and counselors in the Montgomery County Public Schools, our meetings will be interesting. After reading a background paper on the theme of the meeting, hearing more facts at the presentation, and taking port part in the discussion, you will find that you are an expert on almost any topic. We are a diverse group in terms of age, geographical area from which we have come, and professional background. But I think that League members are more alike than they are different. If we return to those women who started the organization in 1920, they were willing to work within the political system and to be patient but persistent in pursuit of their goals. We have not changed in 1985. My personal experience with the League has been very important in terms of my own personal growth. My youngest child is now 13, and I have learned to do one of those studies I described, to write and deliver testimony to the Board of Education, the County Council, or the County Executive. I have learned to moderate a candidate's meeting and set accurate times to an agenda. Women in 1985 take these skills for granted, but women who went to school in the late 50s set different life goals. Through this organization, I learned to do things that my daughter may do as a matter of course. This is a kind of feminism, contrasting in some ways with other women's groups that prefer a different sort of activism, such as marching for a cause, passing petitions, and sitting in in defense of those ideals to which they subscribe. Perhaps the League has appealed to me because I believe it is in the tradition of Judaism to work through a system which is sound, preserving tradition at the same time in which you make change and go forward. My first cousin is Amy Eilberg, the young lady who will be the first woman ordained as a rabbi by the Jewish Theological Seminary. We are very proud of her in our family, as you may imagine. Women of today, like Amy and me, are working in their own way in the community, in their professions, and in their own families to realize their potential. Jews have traditionally been involved in civic and community activities. Their concern has stretched beyond the family, the synagogue, and even the local Jewish community to encompass the country in which they have found themselves. We, as Jews, understand that we have a responsibility to help those persons who may not be able to effect change for themselves. The League of Women Voters has been away for many Jewish women, and since 1974, for some Jewish men, to be involved with working through the governmental system for those principles in which they believe. There are like-minded people in this group who want to understand and learn first, 
and then want to go out and make the world a better place. Thank you.